On April 6th, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services informed four states that they no longer have permission to require their Medicaid enrollees to work to keep their Medicaid. This is an ongoing chapter in the story of Medicaid work requirements. The Trump administration was a big fan of requiring Medicaid enrollees to work to keep their Medicaid. The Biden administration is the opposite. They took the first steps back in February to revoke work requirements in Medicaid. And at the same time, this issue has been working its way through the courts. The update as of April 6 is that Wisconsin, Michigan, New Hampshire, and Arkansas no longer have waivers that are approved to require Medicaid enrollees to work. They essentially wipe out that requirement. States were on notice back in February that this was unacceptable to condition the receipt of Medicaid benefits on a person's ability to work. And back then they had 30 days to contest the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid's decision to revoke that waiver. Neither Michigan nor Wisconsin challenged this decision and those two waivers were therefore pulled and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services issued a letter to both of those states saying, you no longer have permission to require people to work to keep their Medicaid. They are moving forward on reversing the past administration's old work requirements. We're talking about the letter to Wisconsin today. We link to this in the description below. They provide extensive documentation on the harm of work requirements in Medicaid to support their decision to deny this permission. It's a 15 page letter. It has over 77 footnotes citing different research studies and uh, health policy experts uh, and poverty experts pointing to the data and how the vast majority of Medicaid beneficiaries, first of all, are already working and second of all, that the requirement does not promote the objectives of the Medicaid program. This is not a, a public works program, it's a healthcare program. It also points to the harmful experiences of implementing work requirements in other states, and they actually do point to New Hampshire and Arkansas, the other two states that got letters this week, and the impact of COVID and its aftermath on health, why it is so important to keep people connected to the healthcare coverage during a national pandemic. The effective date is May 6th, 2021 for the change in Wisconsin. It says in the letter, it's 30 days after the date of this notice, which was April 6th. Unless Wisconsin files a timely appeal, Wisconsin can still challenge this decision, as can Michigan, as can Arkansas, as can New Hampshire. It does not seem likely that Michigan and Wisconsin will challenge this decision. They have not implemented the work requirement rule in the first place, and they're going to let it most likely silently slip away in the night. New Hampshire and Arkansas is a different story. They are the two states that have the work requirement issue before the U.S. Supreme Court, or at least they did. It was on the calendar for March 29th to be heard in oral argument, but the Biden administration asked the court to pull that hearing off of the calendar, and they did, which means that the court most likely won't hear this case this term, and probably not at all. The Biden administration has been very clear. They want this work requirement issue resolved at the agency level, not in the courts. Now, Arkansas and New Hampshire also were put on notice that they can make a timely appeal to this letter that they received saying, we're revoking your work requirements once and for all. Arkansas and New Hampshire might be the states that actually do take them up on that appeal. So more is likely to come on this topic. But at least for now, we can see a little progress in saying goodbye to work requirement and Medicaid programs state by state. And the state says of April 6th that have said goodbye are Michigan and Wisconsin. <laughs>